In a very short period of time, it seems that the eastern side of the Pacific Ring of Fire, including a very rare 5.7 Antarctica earthquake, both of these situations leading to the 6.2 to 6.5 earthquake that just took place in Central America off the coast of Nicaragua. We will certainly discuss the latest shaking going on in those areas, but we also have to take a look at our Neo chart, Near Earth Objects. Did you know we are going to have not one, not two, not three but ten different asteroid passings in the month of January alone. We've talked about one of those monsters here on the channel, specifically the asteroid expected to pass on January 18th, nearly three times the size of the Empire State Building. We got everything going on today from a winter storm right over to some of the coldest wind chill temperatures we've seen all year. And how about this? To top it all off, we could be looking at the possibility of a January hurricane. More than likely no threat to land, but the fact that we may have a named hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean for January, five years to the month after last time this happened, it actually wouldn't even surprise me. We are going to break this all down and take a look at what's going on around this world right here, right now. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. January 6, 2022, 2.14 p.m. And I'm going to get right into this. I've made you wait long enough. We're going to start with the earthquakes. And I have you here on the USGS. Over the last day and a half, it seems that the eastern side of the Ring of Fire, which circles the Pacific Ocean with some of our biggest earthquakes and the highest number of volcanoes in the world, a 6.2 magnitude earthquake downgraded to a 6.1, being shown as a 6.5 on some other charts, took place in Central America right off the coast of Nicaragua. From what I read so far, the 21.6 kilometer depth earthquake did not cause much damage or things of that nature, but it is part of a string of earthquakes, including one that took place in Antarctica. You do not hear that too often. A 5.7 Antarctica quake, which is very close to the hot spot of the South Sandwich Islands. We do get a lot of big quakes here, but usually that's where it stops. It's rare to get earthquakes in the Antarctica region. So we have that to add to the list of rare earthquakes. And then a little bit of controversy and differing opinions between earthquake sensors talking about this 5.3 that took place off the west coast of the United States 14 hours ago. Now something to notice here is that you could see on the chart the Volcano Discovery website lists this as a 5.3. Now here on the USGS all we have is the report of the 4.6 earthquake near Petrolia, California which is also labeled on the Volcano Discovery website. So the USGS has not reported this 5.3 that not only showed up on multiple charts, but if you go to the Volcano Discovery website and you look down at their stats, it says at 2.45, right after this earthquake took place earlier today, it says it is now using data updates from the USGS. Not only that, but we have reports for that specific earthquake. As you can see right here, people having felt this quake and then coming onto Volcano Discovery to report that data. So I'm curious to see if this 5.3 actually did take place or if we're dealing with another situation like we did with Indiana and the 6.1 false earthquake that was listed there, which is still pretty confusing because plenty of people reached out to me and said they felt it. Others said they live right there and didn't feel a thing. Very, very fishy. But nonetheless, here it is, a 5.3 earthquake being shown for January 6th, the data coming from the USGS. But when we go to the USGS, we see nothing about a 5.3. Moving right along here, for those of you that follow space weather or this channel, you know that we've been talking about the asteroid situation, meteorites, meteors, Comet Leonard, all this stuff going on at the same time. And something about the month of January and asteroids, specifically the fact that we're going to have 10 of these things passing us all within this month. I'm going to link this website right here for you guys where you can come and check out all the NEOs, Near Earth Objects, and how close they approach Earth. There's a list right down here, as you can see, listing the 10 for January, and some of these get pretty pretty close. And the danger isn't really these asteroids themselves. None of these are expected to hit Earth, but it's what comes with these asteroids that often affect Earth. Now, one specifically, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, on January 18th, we are going to have a flyby of an asteroid that is nearly three times the size of the Empire State Building. This specific asteroid, named 7482 1994 PC1, was discovered on August 9th, 1994, and since then the approach has been 
been very much anticipated, and for good reason. Back on New Year's Day, we had a meteor explode over southwestern Pennsylvania, which actually made national news. We had satellite imagery picking up the signature of this meteor, and we did a video about this right here on the channel, and it was discussed that it was a direct relation to the tail of an asteroid. And we need to understand that some of the tails of these asteroids are so large that even when they fly by at far distances, we are still affected by that debris within the tail. And that seems to be more of a concern than the actual asteroids themselves. It's going to be a very interesting month for space weather, to say the least. And I will be covering each and every one of these asteroids and bringing you all the data you need to know. And finally, we're going to move on to the weather real quick. As we've discussed, a few times over the last week we have a winter storm in progress Tennessee Kentucky West Virginia getting the brunt of this storm and snow moving up towards the Northeast soon to be very close to a nor'easter situation and moving pretty fast and along with the momentum of the jet stream that's whipping this thing up to the Northeast it's in turn pulling down ridiculous cold air and you could see that here specifically in the Dakotas take a look at those wind chills negative 43 degrees in some cases negative 50 that is just not whether you want to be be outside in. You can see here on the county by county chart that deep, deep freeze is going on in about 13 different states and seems to just shoot right down the center of the country all the way to North Texas. And then on the eastern end of that is all the energy we're dealing with and the snowstorm that is quickly moving up towards the northeast. We will see how that affects the upper northeast states and we will take it from there. Last but certainly not least, five years ago to the day, January 6, 2016, we had a rare hurricane form, Hurricane Alex form right off the Bahama Islands and had quite the path through the Atlantic Ocean, eventually making contact with the Azores Islands. So this out-of-season hurricane actually made landfall, not within the United States, obviously, but nonetheless a rare situation. Now take a look at this. The most recent GFS run, and I will admit this is far into the future, a good 10 days, but if this all plays out as is right now, we are looking at almost a mirrored situation. In about a week and a half's time, we could see a low pressure system originating within the Gulf, crossing over Florida, and then take a look at the potential of this system. We break the 1,000 millibar pressure dynamic, if that's what you want to call it, and this thing goes all the way down to 965, which would absolutely be hurricane territory. In fact, that is pushing a Category 3. Now, I'm aware that this thing doesn't really have a threat to land until we get way up to the North Atlantic, but to see this taking place five years after our last named hurricane off-season in January, just very interesting. All right, and for those of you still here, I have got to get going. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please leave any comments or concerns down below. Shout out to Canada. And my friends, we have a lot, lot more to come. Stay warm, stay cool, stay dry, and I will talk to you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.